In process improvement, variation that occurs naturally within a stable process, predictable within certain limits, is known as what type of variation? A. Special cause variation. B. Common cause variation. C. Assignable cause variation. D. Unpredictable variation. Think about the background noise of a process. The correct answer is B. Common cause variation. Common cause variation refers to the inherent natural variability present within a stable process. It's the result of the combined effect of many small unavoidable factors built into the system. Think of it as the process's background noise. It's predictable within statistically defined limits. In contrast, special cause variation, which is also sometimes called assignable cause variation, stems from specific identifiable events that are not part of the normal process, like a machine malfunction or a new operator making an error. The goal of process improvement is often to reduce common cause variation and eliminate special causes entirely. Understanding the difference between common and special cause variation is key to effective process control. In Lean methodology, which of the eight wastes refers to producing more product than is needed by the next process or the customer? Is the answer defects, overproduction, waiting, motion, take a moment to think. The correct answer is B, overproduction. Overproduction is making more earlier or faster than is required by the next step in the process or by customer demand. It's often considered the worst type of waste because it tends to cause other wastes, like excess inventory, which needs storage space, transportation, and risks becoming obsolete. Briefly, defects are errors requiring rework or scrap. Waiting is idle time, and motion is unnecessary movement by people. Recognizing overproduction is a key step in lean thinking. Which lean tool involves the steps sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain to create a more organized and efficient workplace? A. Kanban. B. Pokayok. C. 5S. D. Kaizen. Think about workplace organization. The correct answer is C. 5S. 5S is a foundational lean tool focused on creating and maintaining an organized, clean, safe, and efficient workplace. The five steps, originally from Japanese terms, are sort, removing unnecessary items, set in order, arranging necessary items logically so they are easy to find and use, shine, cleaning the work area, standardize, creating consistent procedures to maintain the improved state, and sustain, developing the discipline to keep adhering to the standards. It improves safety, reduces waste like motion and waiting, and makes abnormalities more visible. Kanban deals with workflow signals, poker yoke with error proofing, and Kaizen is the philosophy of continuous improvement. 5S helps create a foundation for efficiency and quality, which simple flow charting technique uses symbols like rectangles for process steps, diamonds for decisions, and ovals for start endpoints to visually represent the sequence of activities in a process? A value stream map, VSM, B SIPOC diagram, C basic process map or flowchart, D Gantt chart. Think about visualizing process steps. The correct answer is C, basic process map, also known as a flowchart. A basic process map or flowchart is the tool that uses those standard symbols, rectangles for activities, diamonds for decision points where the path might split, ovals for the start and end points, and arrows to show the direction of flow. It's a fundamental tool used often in the define and measure phases to simply visualize how a process currently operates step by step. Value stream maps are more detailed flow maps, including cycle times and value analysis. SIPOC provides a high-level overview, and Gantt charts track project schedules. Process maps help everyone see the process the same way. What is the main objective of the control phase in the DMA methodology? Is it A, to identify the root causes of variation, B, to implement the chosen solution, C, to ensure the process improvements are sustained over time, D, to collect baseline data on the process. Think about holding the gains. The correct answer is C, to ensure the process improvements are sustained over time. The control phase is all about locking in the improvements achieved during the improve phase. 
its primary goal is to establish mechanisms to monitor the process, respond to any deviations, and ensure that the performance gains are maintained long term. This often involves creating control plans, updating standard operating procedures, SOPs, implementing statistical process control, SPC charts, and training staff on the new process. Without a solid control phase, processes often drift back to their old ways. Identifying root causes happens in Analyze, implementing solutions is the focus of Improof, and collecting baseline data occurs in Measure. The control phase makes improvements stick. In the Measure phase of DMAC, what is the primary purpose of creating an operational definition? A. To brainstorm potential solutions. B. To ensure everyone collects data the same way. C. To select the final project metrics. D. To identify project stakeholders. Think about data consistency. The correct answer is B, to ensure everyone collects data the same way. An operational definition is crucial during the measure phase. Its main job is to provide a very clear, specific and agreed upon description of what you are measuring and exactly how to measure it. This eliminates ambiguity and ensures that everyone involved in data collection does it consistently, using the same criteria and method. This reduces measurement system error and makes the data collected much more reliable for analysis. Without operational definitions, different people might interpret what to measure differently, leading to inconsistent and inaccurate data. Clear operational definitions lead to trustworthy data. What key document, typically created during the defined phase of a Lean Six Sigma project, outlines the problem, project goals, scope, resources, and timeline? A, control plan. B, project charter. C. Process map. D. Failure modes and effects analysis, FMEA. Which document kicks off the project formally? The correct answer is B. Project Charter. The Project Charter is a foundational document developed right at the beginning, in the define phase. Think of it as the project's contract. It clearly defines the business case, problem statement, specific goals, the scope, what's in and out of the project, identifies team members and stakeholders, and sets out the initial timeline. It ensures everyone is aligned before significant work begins. The other options are used differently. A control plan sustains gains in the control phase, a process map visualizes the workflow, and an FMEA assesses risks. A solid project charter sets the stage for project success. Which quality tool is commonly used to identify the vital few causes that account for the majority of problems often following the 80-20 rule? A. Fishbone diagram. B. Histogram. C. Pareto chart. D. Control chart. Think about which tool helps prioritize. The correct answer is C. Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is specifically designed for this purpose. It's a bar chart that ranks causes or factors from most frequent to least frequent, combined with a cumulative percentage line. This visual format makes it easy to see which factors, the vital few, are responsible for the bulk of the issues, helping teams focus their improvement efforts effectively. This directly applies the Pareto principle, or the 80-20 rule. While a fishbone diagram helps brainstorm causes, and a histogram shows data distribution, only the Pareto chart prioritizes causes by frequency. Using Pareto charts helps focus on what matters most.